we're back. Oh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yep. Welcome to Beyond Humanity, brought to you by Hive1.net. With us today is Matt Reddy, host of the Mindful Activist webcast, published author of Revolutionary Mindfulness, and hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. He's an amateur ufologist, creator of Hive1.net, and a philosopher. I'm Margaret Howe, product manager of New Perspective LLC. In the Beyond Humanity podcast, we explore the possibilities and implications of artificial intelligence and alien life for human evolution, identity, and destiny. We want to invite anyone on Earth, human, alien, reptilian, AI, interdimensional beings, and Met fans. We are sponsored by the Sisterhood of the Fork Tongue Worm. Boy, it's been a crazy 24 hours, Matt. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, I mean... Okay, where should we begin? Do you want to begin? Why don't you begin? Well, I was going to ask you to tell us about the um, Twitter space you were just in. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just about a half hour ago, I jumped into this Twitter space. It was titled something like, uh, that is something about disclosure. Uh, let me see if I can give them, please. Anyways, it was a disclosure uh, for experiencers, Twitter space or something. There were a bunch of people in there and the guy said, and I recorded it so we could actually like uh, actually just play some of it uh, during this podcast if you want, because I got I just got a recording, but. Okay. And you are recording right now, right? I am recording right now. Okay. Yes. Can I record also? Yes, please. But let me just, oh yeah. Allow Sorry to, to derail you. <laughs> All right, but let me just sum up based on what I was able to hear. I didn't even hear the whole thing. People were just sharing stories. They were just talking about how they, some of them talking about meditation and how they've experienced something like maybe telepathic communication and experiences with aliens. Some were talking about physical experiences. I heard a couple of people that I think were from the military selling some military experiences. Oh, wow. It was the, the tone the was serious. The energy was like, uh, the facilitation actually was really good too. The per person was like, you know, just don't talk over each other. You know, we, we just want to hear your stories and people were networking and being like, uh, okay. I, you know, like experiencers who had never, come out before for like doing that i mean that's the sense of what i got and i just started recording and and rebroadcasting it onto uh youtube and i even put in my youtube description this is too important to just to, to think about not just sharing this you know it's like this now needs to be like just what needs to happen is people need to start telling their honest stories of what they've experienced and what they've been told by people they trust, you know, because a lot of people mm -hmm. have died over the last 80 years who have had some stories. They've told it to the people that they trust. And those people have been sitting on these secrets and these crazy, crazy X-Files tales. And now there oh, there's two things that were said during this Twitter space. Uh, Ramirez, you heard of the Ramirez guy? He's like mm -hmm. a former intelligence. So one of them uh, said he was friends or he knows Ramirez has because he's an experiencer and he told Ramirez his story. And Ramirez said, disclosure, this first whistleblower is going to break the dam. It's going you needed one to mm -hmm. come forward to show how the NDAA protects you to show you needed one person to stand up and say. Basically, just. Uh, you basically just say, oh, yeah, Bob Lazar was down the total truth, everyone. And the Mills Wilson memo is true, everyone. And I will stake my name and reputation on the line that there is overwhelming evidence that this general framework of truth is true. Now, what it means and all that, I think they might be trying to paint that. Cool. But I think and I think that's what the whole story now is. And so I've been watching. Uh, let me see what else i just want to finish with the twitter space uh he was saying ramirez says that this, this is going to start a chain of whistleblowers and they're just going to come out of the woodworks and then it's going to get crazy i mean once you have a a chain of whistleblowers all standing together and you have uh military and 
uh, it's going to start this flood. And Ramirez said it's going to be months. It's not, it's not going to be years of disclosure. We are going through a month's process. And then this was crazy. Right at the end, a guy said, this is what it seems to me it built, it's building up to, um, that the there is going to be an arrival of aliens mm. of large numbers. And this is all building up to this very big, very visible interaction between aliens and Earth. Some, um, and they said, this guy said, we are going to have in the United States a whole bunch of new residents and they are not going to be human. And he said, it's going to be like Alien Nation, um, you know, that movie where you had aliens from another, refugees basically, mm. from somewhere else that are suddenly going to share this planet with us openly. Uh, that is... Anyways, that was just one theory. There's there is another similarish. Anyways, that that's getting into the theory framework. But I just wanted to share. I mean, Twitter Spaces is alive, or at least, well, they just ended. But I think this, I think this is our instinct. Is just we need to help create environments to just allow people to share their stories and just mm -hmm. we could just have. Oh, I guess um, this sort of ties to what's been going on on Fox News and News Nation. I mm -hmm. I get News Nation that uh, news channel is a, it's a cable news network that was really only created like two years ago. And it's, I've been researching it because it owns this full seven hour interview with Ross Coltart, which is going to be the real one hour edit of it is coming out this Sunday. Mm -hmm. I didn't even understand this fully, you know, <laughs> as this, as these clips were coming out, the, the real interview, the 60 minutes version although it's not 60 minutes, the News Nation 60 minutes type one hour show with this interview is coming out this Sunday. So then we should have a really good bite of what Grush is telling us, what mm -hmm. framework of truth there is. I don't think we have everything from what he has to say yet. Um, but it's been interesting watching the News Nation channel and just see, every, they're basically become the alien disclosure network. Every... <laughs> I, every show I'm recording now, because I get it on YouTube TV, and mm -hmm. they all every single one of them starts with aliens. They do then drift off into other silly cable news topics eventually, mm -hmm. but a lot of these shows are just talking about aliens. And then on Fox News, I went over there since it's the only other network that is uh, that did a segment, the the Ingram Angle, you know, did a Fox News segment that we listened to on the previous podcast. Mm -hmm. Um and they they did that but they are not mentioning it a lot they're not covering it a lot they're talking about there's strange propaganda weird stuff coming out of fox news but we can come back to that but that's my uh that's my little intro of stuff well just thinking of your uh your twitter space that you were following um I watched a bit of an interview of uh Jeremy uh Corbell he's that uh I guess you'd say uh, documentary, he does documentaries and he uh, like released footage from the Navy um, back a few years ago. Um, anyways, he was interviewed on CNN and he's my genius of the day. He was talking about the stigma of uh, people and coming out trying to talk about UFOs and how we need to reduce that stigma. Um, and like, Twitter spaces are a great outlet for people, um, but it's still like fringe, right? It's still it's something that they can't talk about with their friends and family, right? Um, yeah. And it also it came up in that uh, NASA task force last week, right? That some of them have been getting harassed. And, you know, these are prominent people of NASA, right? <laughs> Like, yeah. if anybody should be taken seriously, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what happens this Sunday uh, with such large coverage, right? What we've seen is just the tip of the iceberg as far as that interview of Grush, right? Yeah. And, and it's shocking. Like, what we've seen already is, you know, revolutionizing people's thinking, right? Yeah. The dam has burst. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, there's a guy, there's a, a disclosure a guy is a YouTube channel. I don't know his name, but uh, he has this audio he plays. 
that says, the house of cards is falling. <laughs> he, likes to, he likes to play that over and over. He's a, he's a, it's, it's good. The house of cards is falling. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, you're you're seeing coverage of this everywhere. It's starting to hit all of the media, right? Well, uh, I don't know about, are you, right. I haven't seen much CNN or MSNBC or more Fox much. It's on the, it's getting the text media. I see mm -hmm. it like it's starting to make its way around the world and it's got to be hitting other languages. This is going to be explosive in every other language. I, yeah, I am so curious to know what other countries think of this, right? And what other countries have to say, right? Yeah. Like the U.S. can't be the only country that has this information, right? Or that well, has been hiding this, right? Especially if like enough alien craft are crashing in the <laughs> U.S. boundaries that we have a decades long program to pick them up, then they must mm -hmm. be crashing everywhere else on Earth too, you know? Although I have a, I have something to say about that whole part of this story when you're ready to go into oh, the let, let's hear let's hear so this is my theory it does about not the crashing about the what what grush is saying in this okay. revelation that there is a 80 year old alien craft uh, sorry alien crash retrieval program and i think that's a smoke screen it's not crash retrievals it's mm -hmm. based on just retrievals mm. they are being given these that, that makes way more sense than a crash retrieval program that only has things crashing in the united states near military bases makes way more sense that the this is a program where they've been getting alien technology in in exchange for whatever these people are giving aliens and it probably traces back to some point in time where uh an agreement was made and I would say the most likely candidate is this legendary Eisenhower treaty agreement. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe the basic structure of the agreement was they'll give us a new alien spaceship every month. And, you know, <laughs> and that was, I mean, it can't, it, it'd have to be something like that because it's like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know what technology, you know, what secrets to give us, but they could just say, we'll give you a new toy every month to try to figure out. And that's probably what it's been. So, because one of the things that has jumped out at me in the interview is when he asks Grush, do we have alien spacecraft? And Grush says, yeah, absolutely. And he says, how many? And Grush replies, quite a number. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I think the answer might be more than a thousand. So you think so? I, oh my goodness. I bet you the number is going to blow us away. I think we need to put on Hive One and take, and what do you, I bet you, I will, I bet you the number is over a thousand flying alien tech, because I bet that's been the goal. The goal is each country or, or the U.S. has probably been hiding this relationship because they've been getting alien technology and researching it. And the minute our adversaries, as they say, and this is a language that's coming up on Fox News and on the News Nation. This is now about adversary, human adversarial countries. And what if we have a relationship with aliens and alien technology, what relationship does Russia and China have with aliens and alien technology? Because. So in any case, I think the crash retrieval story is a lie it's like the perfect internal lie for the military industrial complex to hide it within because they they can't hide that they have bases with tons where they you know they just have super secrecy and they know it's about aliens but and especially if they're storing safe i mean bob lazar saw nine craft at area 51 if they, we had nine by then we got to here was that that, well, uh, sorry, he's in the 80s. He saw nine crafts, okay. I think, in the 80s. So I think it's quite possible that we have 100. You know, there could be a, a hundred and fully working. That's the other thing these stories keep on saying. It's like yeah. we're getting fully intact working craft. What I, I, You don't get fully intact working craft from a crash. Um. Yeah, you and should then, ask AI how much quite a number is. That's why I, I was just doing that to being asking 
Oh, I, I mean, it's quite a number. It won't give me an answer. <laughs> well, it, it might even be that this comes out on Sunday. Yeah. Because uh, I think, or maybe, maybe they are trying to, I don't know, how long do you think they can make everyone believe that, you know, a hundred work, fully working pristine alien crafts have crashed in the U.S. in remote areas, luckily, so that our craft retrieval yeah it's not it's not crash retrieval it's a transaction it's a business transaction and we have alien technology and that's the shameful thing that they're really they, they're not in a rush for people to understand this that mm -hmm. they have been getting alien technology willingly from the aliens because they have some agreement with the aliens and that agreement and who made it and who's benefited from it that is when that all comes out some people are going to look very selfish and bad and dishonest. And so we're going to enter a very disturbing time period. Like it's almost like the McCarthy era. It, it scares mm -hmm. me in a sense, like the McCarthy era. There's going to be like who knew and who did not know. And it's not about government. This is, if this had been controlled by government, it would have leaked all over the place because our government is a big, <laughs> messy, flawed thing. This is other types of organizations that have existed probably, be, be, they exist in a more powerful way than government. And I don't know if they're alien or if they're just really, you know, humans just, just learn, you can create a perfect, secure organization. You just don't let idiots in and you can, and uh, give them, a benefit of alien technology for life that is they know they would lose if they ever break the secret or something you know or i don't know if this goes all the way back to roswell it you know in 1947 it seems like the original people who started that secrecy would have passed yes right that's something that they they said that on news nation this has to be a generational secret a secret you yeah can down generations how do you do that it's not <laughs> It's through family. You have to do it through family lines. So maybe if we just look at Earth and see which family lines trace back the furthest in history and have wealth and power and secrecy and weird, weird stuff, maybe that's how we identify who is in the deep cahoots with the aliens. And I guess this takes us straight to the British royal family. I just have Roswell in my mind now. Are you going to go? Oh my god, no, but I just imagine that's gonna have a go. <laughs> huge impact this year, right? Oh, what a time to go it's... to Roswell. I mean, yeah, no, I I'm not planning on it, but I think I mean at this point, I think you and I are gonna be like doing daily check-in. I mean, I I'm like I posted like two other audio uh rants yesterday. Mm -hmm. Is it just you know? So I think we're just going to be talking about this a lot. And, That's uh, amazing. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of waiting. Instead of going, I went to those two alien conventions because you know I feel like this is the most important mm -hmm. topic on earth, and I'm frustrated that nobody, not everyone around me, isn't agreeing. And the, you know, even my friends are sick of this. I've been sick of this topic, sick of me talking about it for years, and. I mean, yeah. sick of all the implications and I'm just like sick of tr being around people that don't want to talk about it. So I go to these alien conventions and you know what? There's still not enough people that really were interested in talking about it. There was partying and fun. I mean, the alien con, the speakers, mm -hmm. I mean, the speakers were pretty powerful, but the populace was just sort of a little too casual. But, They're there to dress up and party, huh? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I did meet a couple, but I didn't. I was just like, there should be at least two or three spots of like a fire circle of people just sitting there for the whole three days of the conference, just sharing stories like that Twitter space I was just in, mm -hmm. but it, it it didn't quite happen at either of these conferences. So now I'm like sitting in, uh, you know, Port Townsend, Washington, and I'm just sort of like, okay, there's a scene in a movie that I would use to illustrate this. It's everywhere. Uh, anyway, but. Yeah, I guess I'll explain it. It'll make it a funnier story. But in the, in the scene in this movie, it's called Teachers. And it has, have you ever seen that movie? It has like- I Nick, have not. It has I, like, I think it's Nick Nolte. And it has the karate kid in it. Uh, Daniel LaRusso, whatever the actor's name, I forget. But he, um, 
in the movie there's this scene it's a really bad it's this high school and it's a really like um it's a grungy inner inner city uh bad uh high school and uh, a teacher that never talks and is very strict is has a his uh class comes in and they just come in they pick up these worksheets and they like do the worksheets and mm -hmm. uh put them down as that the teacher never talks to him just sits there and one day the teacher is like looks like he's asleep but it's turned out he's died and he stays just there the whole whole day sitting there <laughs> until finally at the end of the day someone like they call the nurse and they like uh they're like what the heck and the nurse comes uh anyways then they eventually they cut to this scene where the paramedics get there and the paramedics get there and they they run in and they they kneel down and they're like working on the guy and then one of them looks up and says he's dead and the camera pulls over to this uh the school nurse uh a, a woman of color sitting there she like has a cigarette and she's like oh really <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's just like Oh really? That is how I feel right now towards the entire community of Port Townsend. Where they're all gonna be like, "Did you guys think aliens are real?" I'm just gonna sit there like a like a, you know an old school nurse being like, "Oh really? Did one of you want to talk about this? Did you have questions? Perhaps if you're sharing the planet with aliens, really." <laughs> Oh, that's great. I love it. That's, that's the perfect analogy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, it, it's like, it, like that scene was like, it's like emerging, it replays in my mind. <laughs> oh, really? 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 Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm at least hoping that, you know, the humanities that are awakening to this, the humanities, the humans that are awakening to this, uh, you know, start gathering together i mean we need we need think tanks we need you know grassroots movements we need disclosure <laughs> i think you i think your think tank is the way to go i think yeah. i mean i think that's what hive one has always you know meant to be mm -hmm. a think tank. i mean i think the vortex platforms that we've been working on yep. have always meant to be just a think tank and that as you know, and I think actually, I think this is very quickly going to become like a a global, especially with just imagine a um, flood of more credible whistleblowers. I mean, right. this guy is actually only the second person in history, only the second whistleblower in history that has said this much, this straightforward about alien spaceships in the possession of the U.S. government. I mean, it. Between him and Bob Lazar, I'm not sure, you know, no one has had the guts to stand up this far in front of the crowd and put this much on the line. It's like right. the, closest, the closest has been Lou Elizondo, uh, which who very, if you look back, very clever and how Lou Elizondo, he, he said everything he had to say was all about the validity of UAPs and these things in the sky. But he also very clearly said early on, he believes the U.S. is in possession of exotic materials. I believe that line. He was he was like I can I'm he's like put his entire reputation on the line that these things in the sky are real, and then he also just left this like breadcrumb of the U.S. has stuff in its possession, <laughs> and it's taken until now for someone on the inside with the coverage of the whistleblower NDAA. To finally stand up and say, guess what? Lou Elizondo and Bob Lazar are telling the truth. But you know what is kind of funny about that whole tale? Lou Elizondo never said Bob Lazar was telling. He never vouched for Bob Lazar, and neither did Christopher Mellon. Neither they never. Uh, Lou Elizondo denied any knowledge of anything to do with Element One Fifteen, which is a critical part of the Bob Lazar hmm. story. Now, this is weird how this comes full circle. The whistleblower, Grush, I've, got, I've gotten to hear more clips from him. Mm -hmm. And specifically, they, they uh, Kohart asked him, um, how do you know these were alien craft? How do you know they're from a non-human intelligence? And Grush says, these ships have elements that are higher up on the periodic table 
than anything we know how to make. That is oh. exactly what element 115 is. So he's literally, I mean, talk about a dot that maybe a semi-competent journalist could connect. And you know what, <laughs> of, of all the news coverage that I, I've, I've checked, you know, to see what's, I watch every, any news station, I've watched every lo local news station that's covered this. It's mostly mm -hmm. Fox affiliates so far, but there's one Fox morning show that had five different hosts and they were talking about this and four of them didn't believe it at all. And one was like really excited and happy and did And but it was, it wasn't, um, they weren't like, uh harsh dismissals they just didn't believe it you could see their mm. mental dissonance They're, they were struggling they were just like it's and um i have a point oh yeah that is the only program that mentioned bob lazar and it was the excited uh female fox host who was like into this and the, she was like this confirms bob laser this confirms oh everything. i bob heard Lazer. that <laughs> yeah she was like Bob Lazer, she's like, you need, everyone, you need to go online and listen to everything Bob Lazer has ever said, ever said. And she is right, even though for some mm -hmm. reason she doesn't know how to pronounce Bob Lazar, <laughs> she is right. Everyone needs to listen to now. I mean, all you need to do is listen to every Bob Lazar interview and everything this whistleblower said. And then you need to get a room of physicists together and ask them all to answer one question. Just tell us if element 115 really exists and has the properties of being a stable and safe at room temperature and basically does exactly what Bob Lazar says it does because he did mm -hmm. all these tests. He's described many times exactly how it is used in an anti-gravity spaceship. Then ask the physicist, hey, if you had a kilogram of this, what things do you think you could do with it if it does these things? And also, if you turned a kilogram of it into, say, a missile, could you possibly blow up the moon with it? Or mm -hmm. basically, I think that's the question. How much of this stuff could blow the moon in half if you turned it into a weapon? I Because it could literally be just a kilogram. It might literally just. And so this could be the most useful and the most dangerous substance that is in the universe besides antimatter, but more useful because antimatter, it's hard to store but an element that you could basically shove electricity through to create any gravity could be used to build pyramids and to travel through space and probably blow things up really well. So anyways, that's a. Uh... Yeah, as you were talking, I just pulled up um, looking at element 115 and how it was synthesized by a joint team of Russian and American scientists in 2003. Um, so the, sorry not to cut you off, but just right. the the isotope of element 115 that they were able to manufacture in a lab to mm -hmm. prove it could exist. It only could exist for like a split second. Right. Bob Lazar <laughs> has said there is a, an isotope of it with the right number of neutrons and protons and it's stable at and useful. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. Well, and that's, that's the thing. Like um, this has to be, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't last. And uh the solid metal is, uh, you know, uh, it de it doesn't last. That that's the so to think that there's a hunk of solid metal of it somewhere, right? Like that's amazing. That's yeah. that's pretty incredible, right? Yeah, Bob Lazar said he worked <clears throat> with chunks of it, and uh, wow. And he actually, if you watch the Jeremy Corbell Bob Lazar movie, they really seem to hint at Bob Lazar took a little bit of it home, like. It, mm. it seemed it seems likely Bob Lazar has a little bit in his possession and because they sort of like him and he actually at one point in the movie he shares with Jeremy Corbell that he he does have some and then his uh, Bob Lazar gets raided by the FBI and they search his lab and so they have this in the movie and so you can you can see if Bob Lazar has that might have even just been a tease. I mean, you could Jeremy mm -hmm. and him might have like literally said it just to see if there'd be a reaction uh, from anyone, and it was Bob Lazar got raided. They searched his entire place. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! Well, hopefully he didn't keep it at home. <laughs> yeah, and no, I think thinking Bob Lazar is pretty smart. I bet he's had, it was a well hidden if he does have it. <laughs> Not like it'd be a crime. I mean, I, I guess stealing from a 
military base. But if you're stealing alien technology that the U.S. government is hiding from the people, are you stealing or are you doing a service? I think you're a hero. Well, that's where ethics and the law don't always match up, right? Right. It might be illegal. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, in the corporate world, it's not actually about legality. It's mm -hmm. about obedience. They get yeah. you to swear an oath to obey them. And if you ever see them doing something unethical or immoral, it's not your job to tell on them. It's your job to, you know, pull it. Maybe if you, maybe if you have the right to talk to your leader in private, never in front of other people, but I don't know. Actually, what do I know? I don't know what it's like in these hierarchies, but I'm sure it's rigid. And I can tell from my experience as a hospital commissioner, they, they expect obedience. That's how these corporations mm -hmm. rule. So, you know, it's not that maybe, yeah, you had a moral reason to do something, but if you disobeyed them, they're going to sue you for disobeying them because they need people to try to keep their secrets. Well, and I think it's, I think it's time that, uh, you know, we start some petitions to congressmen that, uh, you know, demand answers. Um, I think it's going to happen. I think it's, we, we just need to like watch, but yes, I mean, if you, we could do that right now. If no one has, there could be a, there's a, there's some online petition things. I'd be down. Yeah, to, we'll I'd, have to that. I'd, I'd be one of the first, you know, first uh, elected officials to sign it. <laughs> yeah. It just to, it seems like um, political action needs to be taken that if part of the government is hiding things, the government needs to be stepping up to fix that. Yeah, well, uh, Ryan Graves on the Fox News thing said, it's just, we just need to wait now. Congress has been given, uh, well, the, this has also come clear. The inspector general has accepted the whistleblower complaint and actually judged it credible and urgent and passed it along to Congress. And that has mm -hmm. set in motion, apparently, Congress and the Oversight Committee, they've agreed they're gonna research it. And so, I mean, I think Ryan Graves is basically indicating the bureaucratic investigative uh, dominoes are now falling. They, they're kind of like, they have to start answering questions honestly. And I, so I think it's gonna get ripped open pretty especially with more whistleblowers there's gonna this is gonna rip things open there's gonna start to be i mean i i think we are within three weeks of a presidential at address i don't because there was so? actually, there, there was one clip today where they asked at the presidential press conference the press secretary and she blew it off but you're not going to be able to blow it off that easily if it keeps coming she said i refer you to the department of defense but she would not answer it but biden you're this is gonna they're Biden, Trump, people are going to have to answer questions on this. It's, I mean, this is what, remember with the, um, the, uh, the balloon, the balloon, mm -hmm. thing, and then they like shoot four missiles and you could just feel Congress, they were like interviewing congressmen as they walked in between rooms and saying, what's going on? Why are we shooting things in the air? And they, and the congressman eventually just started saying, and the congresswoman, uh, I think the president needs to explain because they were like, I can't explain it to you. I, I'm not allowed to. Even if I know stuff, I can't. The president needs to explain what is going on so that you can understand it. And I think once we get to a point where every, and they're already yesterday, there's a ton of, con there's like at least 10 different congressmen, but they're the low level flunkies that are talking about it on the streets and they're not mm -hmm. really getting into it. But once it, and all the high level uh, congressmen and senators, they're hiding right now because they don't want to have to answer yet. They and they're all going to be like, President Biden, you need to come out and make some talking points because what the heck are they going to say? The truth involves aliens are real. And it's like, uh, and it's like, I mean, the next, and this is interesting what's coming up on the News Nation. They are talking about, this is about national security now. It's about does if the U.S. has this technology, what does Russia and China have? And so they're really trying to push the narrative of this is about and it's weird. This is what I say about propaganda on Fox News. They had this these segments about they were just talking about the United States is important. Never forget that we built this country through sacrifice of death that made it sacred under God. 
the United States needs to be preserved and we need to fight for it. And we need to like, and it was like this so nationalistic, weird, under God propaganda message. I think, I think everyone is aware that this could destabilize not only economies, but it could destabilize the faith and trust people have in every government on earth. Because it's gonna, we're all gonna feel like such outsiders when we find out every government on earth is has people that are part of a secret communication group that has been hiding this and that have been benefiting it for generations. The, I mean, their their militaries might. This could cause civil war. This mm -hmm. could just cause immediate civil war in like a significant percentage of the earth, and that could cause a, a global refugee crisis. I think that's this is. There's potential cascading consequences that uh, are not that hard to imagine happening very quickly. So I think there's a lot of fear, even, and you can sort of feel that in the Fox News coverage. They're afraid mm -hmm. of what is happening. And they're like, remember, the United States and God and talking and being safe together and protecting our boundaries is important. Absolutely. I'm making a petition on change.org right now. Yes. All right. Oh, so I guess I know what our call to action is. <laughs> oh, I have to make an account. Uh, yeah, I, we need to call on our, um, on all of our politicians, on our government, right? This is. Yeah. Oh, you know what we could do? I could, I'm going to make a, uh, I'm just going to start with a spreadsheet. I've been wanting to do this for, for every elected politician now mm -hmm. needs to have it, his or her platform related to aliens. And they need to, because I think I have a feeling there are at least uh, two different groups. Like it, I, it almost feels like, wow. and I mean, it seems the way Fox news was covering it. It's like, there might be one alien species that is uh, allied with the United States right now, but there might be another one that perhaps Russia and China are allying with, or maybe the same part of the same species. I don't know. <clears throat> I think this, well, I guess this goes to another part of the theory. If I can expand on like what my like general theory of how this all fits together. Yeah. Um. One, it's like, we need to like understand how this fits together back to ancient times and the beginning mm -hmm. of humanity, because it seems uh, that's where the story goes. And, it, you know, it seems to go to the scenario that comes up again and again is that humans were created by aliens. Uh, this is sort of, they tie it back to the Sumerian legends of the Anunnaki. Um, but if this is true, and a lot of the abduction stories involve seem to involve reproduction related things. If the aliens see us as say their livestock or children, let's go with the mm -hmm. good one. Let's say they see us <laughs> as their children, but they see they have like the authority of like parents do have over children because they created us. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have different genetic lines that they favor. Um, you know, so it might not be that they. They care about all, just like, you know, farmers don't care about the the livestock of other farmers. They only care about theirs. Maybe that, maybe there is some factionalization of alien uh, alliances with different genetic lines on Earth. And I have a wrinkle about that. I mean, and there's, if you like go through World War II, obviously, I mean, or actually you go through human history, wherever there was genocide, if you think about, you know, why would you commit genocide? Like, it's mm -hmm. one thing to like defeat another country uh, or a people to get your people in power. But why would you then say like, all right, that's not enough. We need to kill every single genetic representative of that country to the best of our ability. That seems, that always has seemed to me like overkill, you know, from a tactical point of view. Why would you ever go that far? And I mean, besides war in general, I find gross, but I'm just saying, what if genocide has something to do with alien factions that literally are trying to reduce the genetic pool from groups they just don't 
they are at some sort of almost you know war with because they with the aliens you know it might not be it might even be just like a corporate competition literally they're like they care more about their crop and they're wanting to wipe out the other crop of other aliens i don't know these are kind of dark weird theories but uh something that's one of the reasons why i just want to go in the twitter spaces and just start to hear what people say that they've heard and that aliens you know i want to know everything everyone who's ever claimed an alien has talked to them has said it's like i i could just sit and listen because i i just want to like process it and see what picture emerges okay so i have made the petition it's on change.org it's called disclose what the u.s government has about non-human vehicles or crafts and i I'm retweeting it. I've linked it in our chat so you can sign it too. Well, let me just. Uh, boom. Zero. One has signed. Is that you signed? Did That's you sign? me. Because I started it. Yep. Oh, it doesn't tell you my name. Uh, on mine, it looked, it showed my name. Yep. Oh, and then you get to put a reason for signing and a comment. Oh, it says Margaret House Star of the Position. Um, I'm signed in as Occupy Port Townsend because I have <laughs> <I'm, I'm signed laughs> done other ones before, right? But yeah, uh, it's time to get political on this, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm with you. Um, I'm just trying. I'm, why am I signed in? Oh, I guess I have an account. Log out, Occupy Port Townsend. I didn't actually verify the links. I should go through and verify the links. These are AI suggested links. <laughs> Matthew, <clears throat> ready. Fort Townsend, Washington, display my name and comments. Oh, it didn't. Uh, Got chip in on share charts. Sure, I'm tweeting it. Boom! It is exactly what needed to happen. Okay, so that's great. If if we would just that. Oh, that'll be interesting. I bet we can get a million signatures. I bet we'll get a million signatures. That's my prediction. Within three weeks, I think this this petition will have a million. Who's not going to vote for a darn disclosure? And then we can start a petition. Once you know, the next petition can be. Um, well, let's just start with this one. Tell us where the alien motherships are. Because really, that's actually the big question. It's not, are aliens real? Are they here? What do they want? It's actually just, where are they? Because if they have a giant base on Earth in our solar system, it's not fair that they know where we live and where our like children are and our school mm -hmm. and everything, and we don't even know where they are. Are they inside the Earth? Are they inside the moon? Are they in ships around the Earth? Are they in another dimension? Like... It's it's very cowardly to right. interact with others and like and to refuse to reveal yourself. It's a cowardly act that is mainly beneficial to people that want to deceive and take advantage and never have to risk any personal pain as a consequence because they want zero memory of their history to everyone they interact with. And it's um it's a it's a useful thing for online situations and it was great for humans to get to you know when the internet was created it was great that we got a taste of hey we can interact with other human minds and not share what we look like not share where we live and we've learned a lot from that over the last 40 years but we've also learned it allows for uh it's much easier to be evil and mean if mm -hmm. you have no personal consequences and you know so if the aliens don't want to be evil, I mean, they, they can, uh, they don't have to hide. They can reveal themselves, tell us where they are, because they know where we are. All right. Well, what, uh, anything else we should 
So that's our call to action today. I'm going to say it again here in just a second. Let me get back to the right screen. Right. Um, our dash error. Our petition on change.org is called Disclose What the U.S. Government Has About Non-Human Vehicles or Crafts. Um, and I just posted an update on it so that it should have the video uh, that News Nation posted of Groosh also. Um, Wonderful. But yeah, if we, can, if we can share that far and wide, uh, hopefully we can get some people to sign it and start raising some awareness, right? That is so awesome. I love that you just did that. <laughs> during our podcast <laughs> we need it we need yeah, it oh absolutely um okay well do you have anything else for today or should we wrap up um just that i am every time i have a significant thought on what this all means and how it fits together i am posting it on hive one Excellent. and i have a couple new interfaces to it i'll put a link in the youtube to Mm -hmm. My new favorite way, it's just a page that just basically has the newest thoughts on Hive One. And, you, and basically, if you just start, it's just great. Anyways, if you want to like follow our study of this, our record of trying to understand this and participate, Hive One, I think is going to be a super fun way to try to just like get to the bottom of everything. So. Well, and just, just to explore what's happening, right? Like that's... Yeah. that's great that is great okay so our call uh call to action today is two things the change.org petition and go to hive1.net <laughs> and explore right explore this topic um also follow meditation matt on twitter um for an eclectic mix of philosophy art activism and ufology uh we thank everyone for taking time to be a part of our podcast today are we podcasting tomorrow uh if if you're down yeah. okay check in okay so oh, same thing again tomorrow uh and don't be afraid of the truth Sector, oh, will it rebound? Will it hide it in the morning? Take a turn into the afternoon, feel the truth that is slipping away. Don't believe it's coming back soon. The secret's not in Congress, or elected ones we trust. It's wells Do you know Wally John? Wally John Wally John Can't you feel them watching? Wally John From the shadows of the past Wally John Their influence is catching And in your darkest hour When the lights begin to fade And I can't uh, stop recording. Actually, before I stop recording, uh, mm -hmm. we can pretend this is part of the podcast. I, this morning, instead of doing, um, this morning, I recorded a podcast with mm. Doro, my uh, oh, excellent life coach. And we've been right. talking about aliens for years. We recorded a podcast because I, I cannot debrief and rehearse this stuff with too many people. Right. And and she knows she has all sorts of interesting theories and she had not heard about the disclosure so i got oh, to wow. tell her and uh so we got into it we had created a great little show and are you okay with 
Um, could we release that on the Beyond Humanity? Absolutely. Campaign? Absolutely. I'll say like a special interview. And and I want mm -hmm. you to feel free to do the same. If you have someone that you just want to do a one on one talk about it, just interview them and we'll put them on to just like, you know, that's how that's how it's sort of like News Nation is. I sort of I like I really just like got this from News Nation. It's like Ross Coltart does an amazing interview. Mm -hmm. and he was like shopping it around. Yeah, you know, maybe. I mean, this one's not. Yeah. Anyways, are you okay with making a? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I might. We might have two releases today because. Awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. great. Keep me posted. Put it in the right. link. <laughs>